today I want to show you guys how to prove De Moivre's theorem or De Moivre's theorem. Um, I just want to show you guys where that formula with the r to the n cos of n theta plus j sin n theta comes from because uh, I noticed a lot of people don't know and it's really easy to prove. So let's let z1 and z2 be elements of all the complex numbers. Okay, And we're going to define these with variables. z1 is going to have r1 times, and we're just writing them in polar form, we'll say cos of alpha plus j sine of alpha, alpha just being some, some angle, right? We don't know what it is. And z2, we'll let that be r2 times cosine of, and this one we'll choose uh, beta plus j sine of beta. Perfect. So. We know that for De, uh, De Moivre's theorem, we are, it's when we have something to the exponent, so we're multiplying it together. So let's just multiply z1 and z2 together, okay? z1 times z2, and that'll be r1 cos alpha plus j sine alpha times, and then r2 cos beta plus j sine of beta and what we what all we want to do is we're going to distribute this um, we're just going to do it like any other any other multiplication right so what we're going to get our r1 and r2 that's going to multiply together right r1 and r2 and then we need to distribute uh, we're going to foil the inside of these right so we're going to get cosine of alpha times cosine of beta and then we're going to get plus j times cosine of alpha sine of beta plus j. And then we got sine of alpha cosine of beta. And then last one, we've got j squared times sine of alpha times sine of beta. Great. And we can simplify this just a little bit. R1 times R2. And we've got, I'm just gonna write this as cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And then, we well we know that this J squared, let me scroll down a bit. We know that this J squared right here, that's gonna be equal to negative one. So it's gonna be minus sine of alpha sine of beta and then we've got our imaginary terms and I'm gonna factor out the J just for readability cos alpha sine beta plus sine alpha cosine beta perfect so now we've got this looking thing right doesn't look the prettiest and we can just use two simple trig identities and simplify this really greatly so just a reminder, you know, sine of A times cosine of B plus cosine of A times the sine of B is going to be equal to sine of A plus B. And you might notice that that follows the same structure as this up here, right? If you take a look at that, it's the same. And then we've got one more. We know that cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A times sine of B. That can simplify to cosine of A plus B. And then you can recognize that that's the real, or that's the real part of the ugly equation we've got up there, right? So let's simplify those as much as we can. So now we can rewrite this as r1 times r2 times, and then th that green part is just going to be cosine of alpha plus beta plus, and then this imaginary part, that'll simplify to sine of alpha plus beta. And it's starting to look a lot more similar. And what, what we learned from this, we learned two things. Number one, when we multiply, um, 
our two complex numbers together and now we've got the modulus of those two numbers those will be multiplied together and we've got the argument or the angles of the two complex numbers those will be added together and we can just rewrite it in polar form if we know those two things that we multiply the modulus together and we're going to add the arguments so what happens if we multiply a number by itself right so let's take a let's take z is an element of a complex number where z is equal to r times cosine of theta plus j sine of theta this is just the standard polar form that we know for a complex number right so if we took z and we multiplied it by z then we would get r squared we got r times r and then we told we just told ourselves that we add the angles together right and they're both theta in this case so it'll be theta plus theta right and this will simplify to cosine of 2 theta plus j sine of 2 theta perfect so if we did that with 3 if we did z squared and then we multiplied that by z then you'd find the same thing is that we multiply together our mods and then our arguments we're going to add this time we'd be adding 2 theta plus theta which is 3 theta and if you kept doing this to infinity then you'd notice that there's a pattern you have probably already noticed the pattern and it's z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine of n theta plus j times the sine of n theta and that is that's de Moivre's theorem or de Moivre's theorem however you call it um, and it, see it's really not that hard to prove and now it, hopefully when you apply this equation it makes a whole lot more sense than just blindly plugging in the numbers.